So something I've noticed about the XJs, especially you know, with most of them being 20 or more years old, is that the center console bracket that holds the center console down in the rear, uh, that bolts to the transmission uh, tunnel, uh, they all break. You know, it's really hard plastic. It's seen a lot of heat either from the transmission, environmentally, or, you know, for, through the heating system. They tend to wear and break. And I think just about every XJ I've ever seen has a broken console mounting bracket. So much so that I've actually seen some aftermarket offerings to combat that or to fix it. I believe JCR has one, um, at least, that I've seen. And I think the price tag for that is roughly around $40. You know, it's, it's a good option. It's not necessary. It's not going to make or break your rig. It will secure that console down and not have it, you know, bounce around on you. So what I've decided to try since mine is broken anyway, I'm going to try to fab something up with some scrap that I have lying around the house. So uh, this is, once again, just a whim. We're going to give this a shot. So the idea here, and this isn't perfect, I literally just kind of threw this sketch together when I was at work one day. If you're looking down on the bracket the same way the bracket is right now, uh, for the most part, what I'm going to do is cut this out of 16 gauge steel. And it's going to follow generally this design. The reason I have angles here is I'm going to cut this out, cut this down here, and then put a slice in all these little triangles here. And what that's going to do is I'm going to fold it down so it makes kind of like this. The top and then fold it down. And when I fold this down, I'm going to fold it underneath, bring it into the center, creating a support. Not only for the top of the bracket, but also for the legs that I'm ultimately going to be welding on. So uh, let's give this a shot now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to cut this off flush so I can go put this roughly back together and trace exactly what I need. Okay, so now that I've cut this off as flush as I could possibly get it, I'm going to go ahead and trace this onto my template. So what I'm also going to do now is mark where all the legs go. So I want to ideally match this bracket as much as I can so it bolts into the factory spots. Okay, so this is a leg, a leg, leg. This does vary a little bit from the plate that I was thinking about in my head. I wasn't expecting uh, or I didn't think about the leg being on the corner. So what I'm going to do is probably do this. Cut this out similar to this and maybe notch this out a little bit so when I fold it together it'll come together in a 90 degree angle. I'll tack this and I'll do the same thing kind of what I decided to do with this. Um, angle it in, slit this, and then fold it in so I literally have a support there. I'll do the same thing here and I'll have a support here and then do the same thing right here. I'll kind of have it in so that way when I fold it in like this I have a support here, here, and here. Now this is 16 gauge steel. It's obviously not as, uh, it's almost as thick as this plastic I would say, um, but this plastic does have some uh, some bracing and some supporting, but I'm thinking between the little brackets I'm going to cut, I think I should be good. Um, like I said, the steel is going to be a little bit more rigid than the plastic, so Hey, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Alright, I might have confused everybody a little bit. So just imagine the hard outlines here. I'm going to try cutting this out. Now you can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to test out and use a plasma cutter. We'll see how it works. Looks a little bit like something from Mad Max, but I'm going to go ahead, uh, put it on the sander, 
and hopefully clean this up a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark on here where all my slits are gonna be and where my fold marks are gonna be. Don't you hate it when you use a marker and you can't find the damn cap? I have no idea where it went. All right, so for the most part, I found uh, all the hard lines are where we're gonna have to bend, or I'm sorry, cut, or put a slice. And these are going to be my bend marks. The only one I messed up was on this. This is going to be a bend. This is going to be a hard cut. This is going to be a hard cut. This is a bend, hard cut, bend. I mean cut, bend, cut, bend. All right, so everything's been sliced and diced. I made a couple, couple mistakes here and there, but for the most part, I think I got this. So let's try the tedious task of bending this thing. So this corner, I didn't notch it out correctly, so I gotta trim it back. So what I'm gonna do now is probably I gotta clean. I gotta clean this up so it looks a little bit better. All in all, it's, it's coming out okay. Um, definitely not as pretty as I was hoping, but it is what it is. I, like I said, I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna bend these tabs under, get those set, and then uh, do some more grinding and cleaning up, and uh, we'll go from there. The top of this thing is pretty much done. That's what it looks like so far. It's a bit rough, but I still got more uh, more to do. I have to bend this one back in, just as a little bit of support. I'm almost wondering if I even need to weld this other support in. I might be okay without it. I just gotta tack that down, move this over, and then I can start worrying about the legs. So. The legs will be fun. To keep with the trend on uh, how the legs have these, um, you know, kind of tubular supports here to kind of strengthen them, I'm going to go ahead and do something very similar. I've got this, uh, what is this? This is a quarter inch um, tube. I'm literally going to cut it in half uh, so that way I can kind of mimic the legs. You can see here, basically mimic the legs that came on this thing. I'm also going to end up using these, um, this tube, for uh, the little prongs that stick up on top. If you remember, I cut it off. But basically this, I'm going to go ahead and use this three-quarter tube as the same thing. Arr! This thing looks like a medieval tool, instrument of death. Okay, so now I have the top done. I'm going to go ahead and start measuring for the legs. Cut my first leg. What I'm going to do is take the square tube. This is a uh, three-quarter inch. I'm actually going to cut this in half so I can kind of mimic what the other leg looked like. So that's what I'm going to do now. I cut along the top of this piece here. It, I know it's bent now, but I cut it. Oops. Let me get out of it. So just imagine this. Okay, so here's what I did on this side. I cut right above the actual flat piece here. So that way, ultimately cutting where these bends are. And then I flared them out just a little bit, and I bent the bottom part up to give me an angled bracket. Then I trimmed the little wings down to meet the angle. And what I'm gonna do is just gonna throw a tack on each side of there just to kind of hold it in place. And then Yahtzee. Get this all measured up and then tack it in place. All right, so these roughly measure about the same. Oh, well, it did roughly measure about the same.
Yeah. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw one or two small tacks. I don't want to finish this yet. I want to tack all the new arms in place and kind of place it in the vehicle just to see how the fitment is. So here's my next leg, it's going to go right here, so now I'm just going to use the old bracket just to kind of line up where this next leg is going to go. Okay, so now that I've got the bracket uh, go pretty much fabbed up, everything's tacked in place, I'm going to go ahead and take the old bracket, I'm going to cut the legs off. Reason being, and you don't have to do this step, but I just want to lay this on top of the new bracket and trace where the prongs come up off the top that actually mount to the center console. Okay, so now I got the old console on top of the new one and actually everything looks pretty good in terms of uh, sizing and whatnot so we did okay. Now I'm going to trace out where this one goes and then I'm going to find the other one it's around here somewhere and put that where it belongs as well. So I went ahead and traced roughly traced where these would have been these would have been poking up like that so I'm going to go ahead and measure measure these, make them a little bit bigger, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack them in place. The beauty, the beauty part about the console in the XJ is if you look at the mounting points, the mounting points are slotted, so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, or at least it doesn't look like it does. It's hard to see down there. But if you look, there's some play. You have about maybe a half an inch either way. So it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, it just has to be ballpark. So that's what we're hoping on. Don't wear webbed shoes when you weld. I think I just burnt my toe. Dang, I just hurt, keep hurting myself. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead, put this back in the Jeep, put the console back over it, see if it lines up. Is what I might do is take a small piece of the 16 gauge that I got, make a little topper, weld it to the top of each one of these, drill a hole, so then that way the screw can uh, go into, it has something to bite onto, and then we're kind of done, at least for the mock-up stage. I'm going to go back, weld everything in, not to overheat it, uh, take a flap disc and kind of clean up. So uh, let's go test fit first. Okay, so now I got everything back in the Jeep. I got the console pretty much seated the way it's supposed to. And if you look, I might have missed this one just a little bit, but I've got about three quarters of that slot good so I'm gonna call that good and I tested this one right here and I got nearly the whole slot to work with not to mention the height seems to be good when I close this it's not even bolted down yet but it's it's pretty solid so once I actually bolt this thing down I think we're gonna be in really good shape so what I'm gonna go do is t unfortunately take this thing apart again take it out cap the um, the two uh, uprights that I just tacked in uh, with some uh, 16 gauge steel, drill a hole uh, slightly smaller than the screws I'm going to be using, finish weld everything, um, take a flap disc to it, make it look semi pretty, paint it, put it in and call it a day. Alright, so I got my two caps made, I'm going to go ahead tack these in and uh, Away we go. Everything's been welded. I'm going to hit, go back, hit it with a flap disc. 
smooth out some of these edges, clean up some of these really bad welds that I did. That one not so bad. This one not so good. Some of these are not so good. Alright, so a couple things I gotta do. I'm gonna trim this back, grind this more to a curve. This thing is pretty solid, man. Hell yeah. Not my best weld, it's definitely not. I'm gonna put in a more like that instead of all these boogers. But some of them came out good, some of them didn't come out too good. But. A little bit more, a little bit more smoothing out with the flap disc. A little bit more trimming. Some paint. I call it good. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Pretty cool. So I've gone ahead, rebolted the console bracket back in place. I've got the console pretty much lined up based on some of the factory bolts already. And what I'm going to do. If you can see, I'm going to go ahead and mark where I want to drill. Okay. Oop. Okay, good. So, console comes back out again. I'm going to drill those holes uh, for the screws that are going to hold the console down. I'm going to paint it and install it. Okay, one modification I did have to do on the underside when I test fitted it was I trim this bracket back and I trim this other bracket back. You can see the cutout right there. Reason being is it was hitting the the airbag module that sits underneath it. So so be it. Um, you know I would have liked to have the extra bracing there but I think this loom it'll do just fine. It's still stronger than the plastic that was there. So let's drill the top part of this where the console sits down on top of, paint it up, let it dry, install it, and call it a day. So now that the bracket's all painted, I'm going to go ahead, throw it in the Jeep, button everything down, and call it a day. Alright, so it's all installed, now I just got to put the console back down on, uh, bolt it up. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, it's not perfect, definitely one of my first, uh, first attempts at any type of any real fabrication, you know, anything that I've kind of made up in my own mind. Uh, I learned a couple things, some things I'm going to, I would have done differently. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm 100% happy with it, but it definitely could have been a lot worse. So I'm just going to keep, you know, putzing around with the welder and the cutters, and just you know keep trying to push myself to get better and better. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or found this useful, go ahead and leave those down below. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see me make more of an, a fool out of myself. Uh, that's kind of it. So uh, thanks for watching.